Γεια σα! Καλώ ήρθατε στο That Pendal Show. Ο Ντάν εδώ. Ο Μίκη εδώ. Η Γιάννη είναι εδώ. Hello. Perfect, guys. Perfect. There we go. We've been working on that for literally minutes before you got here. So, yeah, great. Uh, Tis Yanis from Jam Pedals. We also have um, the other gentleman. This is Ilias. This is Emmanuel, Manolis. They are Jam Pedals. Maybe we'll hear from them in a little bit. Um, but for now, check this out. Mate, thank you so much for coming over and hanging out with us. This is awesome. So happy to see you guys. We've got a lot to discuss. I've had to um, phonetically write Yanis's name out. It's Yanis uh, Anastasakis Marinos. <laughs> and what we get there, of course, is Yanis J Anastasakis A M Marinos. 
Okay. I never knew that. My dyslexia that says Malakos. <laughs> <laughs> you learn so fast, Danny. Congrats. <laughs> no, so the story goes, I was working at a Greek restaurant for a couple of years and they called me Malaka for the whole time. And I said, what does that mean? And someone said, uh, I thought it meant a term of respect. Or My favourite friend ever. Then I found out what it meant. So, um, <laughs> and apparently... It can mean It, it can mean anything, things. actually. Fifty yeah. Shades of Malacca. From my <laughs> dear body till you f***. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Okay, uh, we've got some ground to cover today. We want to... So, for regular viewers of that pedal show will know that we have a really good relationship with Jan. We've known these guys for a long time. Um, we first... Well, we met years ago at NAMM shows and things like that, but after that, we did a special edition Rattler pedal, um, which then... While we were discussing the special edition Rattler pedal, as I remember, over a few beers uh, there in Athens, mm -hmm. it was either me or Dan and said, do you fancy doing a harmonic tremolo pedal? Whereupon everyone fell off their chair laughing. <laughs> and the next thing we know, Harmonious Monk is born. Indeed. We, we found the name the same night, right? We did. Yeah. We did. It, was, it took a number of beers. and uh, But yeah, we came up with it. It was hilarious. So you've been introduced to Jam, A, through the pedals, B, through some of the behind-the-scenes stuff we've shot for both the Rattler and Harmonious Monk. But we thought it would be good to join the dots. These guys are in the UK. They're visiting a few dealers, doing a few things. They went to see Blur at Wembley. Is that right? What that, do you think? That was one of my favourite shows I've ever seen. Awesome. Yeah, we had only, so much fun. The, uh, it was the only better show that you saw was the first show that you saw when you got here, or was that number two? My favourite show I've ever seen was in London, and it was Camel. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Back in 2003. Right. Okay. We, we did say we were going to get, try and get in touch with Andy Latimer, who do, who lives in the next village, basically. No way. Yeah, yeah. So we failed. Anyway, okay. we'll try again. <laughs> so we've got some historical stuff to cover just briefly. Um, one of the super interesting things about Jam is the way uh, the pedals are made there in Athens, mm. through Hole custom art on every enclosure, just literally the most idiotic way to build pedals <laughs> in the modern world. Uh, we'll cut some shots over that. But I guess let's kick off, Yanis. And so there you are in your, what, late teens? There in Athens studying electronics. Mm -hmm. I got in the university, in the National Technical University of Athens, when I was 18, back in 2002. And three years after that, I started messing around with uh, electronics and building my own very first pedals, experimenting with uh, schematics and uh, components and everything. And uh, I really loved the procedure. Mm. I really loved the result. And then I was very proud of what they sounded. And so I was like showing off to the guitar players I knew back then. And um, when I saw these reactions that they all loved them and they asked me to actually buy the pedals, I thought that I could do more with that right. and started. Uh, I, I made a website myself. I did everything myself back then. I painted the enclosure. Wow. I really like to be colorful and uh, unique. So, so that, yeah. was, that was a concept that you had right from the start, mm -hmm. was combining not just extraordinary sounding things, but the visual uh, aesthetic of the pedal. Yeah, the very first jump pedal was painted <laughs> colorfully. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Again, if, you, if you've watched some of the VT we've done on the previous projects, the, the amount of handwork that goes in into multiple yeah. masking, multiple spray coats, and that all happens right there in Athens, right? Yeah, we do everything uh, in Athens. I mean, we have three workshops, three different places, because we are around 35 to maybe more people working wow. there. Wow. And uh, yeah, we keep doing it the same way, like uh, day one. Amazing. So on the one hand, we've got uh, the electronics. On the other hand, there's this clear artistic streak. Were you, were you a painter? Did you get into that as a kid? How did that no, work? I, I, I liked painting, but I, I cannot consider myself a painter. And that was <laughs> the first thing that I let go. 
Right. And I asked, I hired the guy to do all the, the, the artworks. Okay. A really nice painter. Because I know your wife, uh, Natalia. Natalia is uh, an artist, uh, yeah. fine arts, uh, a, a sculptress and the uh, fine arts. And she also does some of the custom yeah. artwork. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah but awesome. now the team has grown. I mean, there is five or six uh, artists working in house to do all the standard and custom stuff. Wow. Really. I can't think of another brand where you can. So check out the custom shop, right? So I'll cut in a detail now of one of the pedals that Yanis has been using today in the music you've heard. And that is basically a whole load of stuff built into one enclosure and then custom painted. Now, given that it's your company, you can do that, but people can actually order that stuff, right? Yeah. This is open to anybody to custom order multi-pedal and we can include any number of pedals wow. in there. It's nuts. And then you make some as standard, so the Pink Flow... Yeah, our first standard multi-pedal is the Pink Flow. Uh, we have plans to do another one, which is, we hope it's coming soon. Mm. Um, yeah, so the only standard one is the Pink Flow, and then we receive custom orders for any other stuff. I find interesting what we've what drew us to jam pedals in the first place sonically was the analog nature of the circuits mm, mm. so i think we probably all reference the waterfall the chorus which is just the most beautiful analog chorus the ripley four yeah which is a vibe in a phaser was it always were you drawn to those analog circuits because i would have thought if you're studying electronics there's a lot of the most forward technology possible in that world is there or is that how it works yes to be honest i, I was not the best student in the university <laughs> right so uh, analog electronics was enough for me to experiment with uh, the schematics and the mm -hmm. circuits the analog circuits so there's so much field in there that we still haven't covered in the analog world mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I never had the, um, the need to, to go into the digital realm. Sure. And is that fed from maybe some of your musical preferences or the kind of music you love? Yeah, the music I, I loved and I still love 
mostly of that was made in the 70s, 60s and 70s. So everything was analog back then. So my, my the sound I I had in my ear back then was all analog, and I was trying to approach these uh, sounds mm-hmm. with the pedals I, I first started making. And what is it about the traditional method, shall we say, of of making pedals? Because if you walked into a workshop back in the mid 70s and saw the way they were making pedals and then walked into your workshop today, apart from the thing sucking the fumes out of the solder, there's be very little difference. Yep. Um, so what is it about the nature of that traditional way of building pedals that you love and has become sort of synonymous with jam? I, I think li- little things have changed in till the 70s. For, uh, I mean, if you want to make this kind of uh, pedals in the way we make it, mm-hmm. the way to do it is almost the same. So y- unit hands, of course. Yeah. Uh, the way we do it, machineries are not able to do it. Right. And maybe that's the reason most of the companies today opt to the SMT technology because machines mm-hmm. finalize the, the PCB board. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it feels better to make everything by hand. So can, uh, all of your boards are hand stuffed? Yeah. I, I remember going to Boogie once in uh, maybe in the late 90s and they did actually have a machine that would that would slot boards with components like this Imagine a CNC machine. Yeah, pick and pick and place machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I often wondered if it broke down more than it worked. But they <laughs> they, made, they made loads of amps. But everything you do is hand inserted. Mm-hmm. So every component. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How many meetings a week do you have where you all sit around a table and go, "Should we stop doing this?" <laughs> well, it's a question, but laughing. we always ask to ourselves. But. Uh, Till today, we get the same answer. We really like it the way we do it. We don't want to change it. Yeah, nuts. And having the the appreciation of guys like you, this gives us a lot to continue it doing that way. I'm kind of interested in the R and D process. So when you come up with a new idea, maybe what what was this? What's been the simplest? Uh, R and D process. So, which pedal? When you go, let's do this, and then it hits the market. What's been the simplest? I mean, the process back then was different than it's today. Uh, back then, uh, when I st- firstly started, you start. I, I think the f- the first pedal I, st- I started with was the uh, Rooster, which is a treble boost, a range master style mm-hmm. of which is very simple to to make, right? It's only 10 components. But do we have the Voyeur version here? <laughs> we do. Okay, okay. This all right. is a custom so, shop version. All right. You say it's simple, right? And it's, I mean, it's beautifully made, the Germanium Transistor Trouble Booster. But if we turn the pedal around, there's a zipper <laughs> that you can undo and then you can have a peek inside I mean, that is flipping <laughs> I'll, I'll, genius. I'll do a close-up. It's a, it's, a, it's a red leather case with, I mean, with a zipper. The story with the uh, rooster and the fast phrase uh, that they both are, uh, were using the, these NOS uh, old transistors. Which, NKTs? Uh, no, it, it, these are the military version of the OC44. Oh, nice. Okay. CV7003. Three. Okay. Which okay. sound okay. amazing. Three. Three. Uh, the sad thing is that uh, they're finished. <laughs> yeah, right. So once, I mean, I was lucky back then, I think in 2006 or seven, to find a big amount of stock of these mm-hmm. transistors and I bought them all, which was that a very huge investment for me back at the time. Um, and uh, after some years, Actually, it was Emmanuel who was shouting that we should call these pedals limited because we won't yeah. have them forever. Yeah, they're gone, yeah. And we wanted to be limited, to look limited. <laughs> so we trying, we were trying to figure out ways to that they look special. Mm. So we worked with a great team of um, designers in Greece 
and they had this idea that we could uh, cover them with leather and with a zipper idea because we wanted to somebody could see the the work yeah, that yeah. was behind yeah. the the PCB board because there, these pedals are uh, hand wired point to point wired uh, with uh, turrets so and we use only old components back from the 60s 70s area and tropical all... fish capacitors and carbon comp uh, yeah, yeah. resistors they... Those transistors are all gone now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, I remember wow. you did. You did the last run of first phrases. I think it was just recently. A few months ago. Yeah. 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 Okay. So how long then? Uh, the easiest transition from I've got this idea. It's on sale. How long yeah. does that take? So to answer your question, the process is different when you want to make your own version of a treble boost or a fast phase mm-hmm. or. A, Uh, rat type uh, distortion uh, so you you already have the schematic there uh, what I usually did was trying to find the original pedal right so something have something to compare and having it as, uh, as the starting point and then depending on uh, for example what happened with the univibe was that the original univibe sounded so great that I was just trying to make an exact copy because there was n- nothing I've found back then that sounded close to an original Univibe. Mm. Um, with the rat, the truth is that there were things that I heard that I didn't like it so much mm-hmm. and I thought it, it could be improved. Uh, so I started messing around with uh, resistor values or capacitor values or different transistors or diodes, uh, the things that all uh, big pedal builders do in the beginning, Mm -hmm. like trying to modify existing circuits. But, uh, and when I uh, I was there, I felt it. Right. And and then I had also a manual that uh, gave the seal of approval because Emmanuel was an experienced guitar player Uh, he used to work in a great guitar store back in Boston. I turned to a point that I really like it as it is. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Mm-hmm. And then maybe sometimes we did a few tweaking uh, ourselves. And uh, that was when we had something that w- said that's it. Uh, How hard was Harmonious Monk in comparison to other pedals was it the same was it harder? harmonious monk was a completely different story yeah um, because we didn't uh, harmonious monk w- wasn't based in any existing uh, harmonic tremolo so we, we we got the feedback from you mm-hmm. that uh, what you liked and what you didn't like from some of the existing pedals out there and from the original harmonic tremolo in the old fender arms And then, with the help of a great designer that we have in house today, um, we start. We try to capture your initial feedback and our taste of how any modulation should s- sound like. Mm. And with a few back and forth with you, I think we we were there. But it was uh, a design that. W- was started from scratch. We we didn't have something to st- start from. Right. Did it trigger anything else in the line? Did you did you learn things from doing that where you're like, ah? Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, every new design gives us uh, very important feedback for the next ones. Nice.
<laughs> so one of the things that we've always loved is analog modulation, right? And with your, you know, mentioned the Ripley 4 before um, and the waterfall and a lot of artists uh, early on found your modulation. I remember seeing a, a, a poster of the waterfall um, with uh, Lukather, maybe. Yeah, and yeah. and Bill Frizzell, does he? Yeah, the waterfall was our first our first best selling pedals. Right, since two thousand seven or eight. Uh, it was the pedal that uh, everybody... I remember Nels Klein. We were yeah, in contact yeah. with Nels, and I contacted him and asked him if he was... He was interested to, to try the pedals, and I told him, do you also... would like to also to check out our uh, Chorus pedal? And he, 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 his reply was like, sorry, I hate Chorus pedals. Yeah. <laughs> and, that but, was, and it's interesting, because in that period of time, I remember a lot of people yeah. hating Chorus pedals. Yeah. And then uh, I'm seeing the waterfall going, oh, Chorus is making a comeback. But I didn't awesome. listen to him and I put a waterfall <laughs> in the package. <laughs> Good man. And he was like, dude, this pedal sounds great. I never thought I would use a Chorus pedal. Wow. And he also loved the, vibra the vib vibrato setting. Yeah. yeah. Is that yeah. how John Schofield uses it? Uh, yeah, John Schofield uses it for many years now. I think in both uh, more as a Chorus and as a vibrato as well. John Abercrombie used to use it a lot as a vibrato. Right. Yeah. Um, Steve Lukather uh, uses. Where's it. the name drop horn? Yeah. This is yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. You, you can you can do a collective honk on all those names you've just dropped. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so, your the music that you gravitate towards because getting when you mentioned having Manalus as the guitar player. Um, you know, really experienced and played through loads of stuff. And devilishly attractive as well. Yeah, handsome, handsome man. Um, when uh, we first saw you play, it was with, what was the, the name of the band? The um, Oh, you mean back in Athens in Africana, it was with uh, Michalis Siganidis. Right. He's a great uh, composer and uh, musician from Greece. It's amazing. Avant-garde, sort of experimental. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think to describe his music, it, I could describe him as the Greek Frank Zappa. Okay. <laughs> being into a lot of experimental, being led by the sounds, what, is, what has that done to inform the way that you approach pedals? Because... Most pedal manufacturers that I know are first and foremost guitar players. Mm -hmm. um, but you're coming at this from a completely different thing. So how has that led you to where you are? Well, I used to play a lot of classical guitar right. when I was a child. I also finished my studies in classical music and I got a degree wow. for classical He's a guitar. really serious classical guitar player, <laughs> I, I learned last night. Okay. Like... <laughs> then forget everything I just said. Can, uh, can do that thing, you know, that. That thing, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have nails. <laughs> but, and, and at the same time, I started playing in uh, bands, playing progressive psychedelic rock, because right. Pink Floyd, Camel, Gong was my first favorite bands. And uh, I started playing as a guitar player with, Many pedals and uh, a lot of uh, strange sounds, but I was playing guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, as the years um, passed, I, the, the sounds and the effects and pedals got me, and I, I start. I, I remember I was found myself being more like on my knees, doing oscillations and mm -hmm. stuff with the pedals. Uh, then I was standing playing guitar, and that was the moment that I realized that I should get a keyboard stand and uh, put everything up. Nice. Uh, so from that moment, I started messing around more with pedals and creating sounds, and that intrigued me more than re really playing guitar. Right. And uh, then I created a solo project where I was playing my own, and uh, with Denise, that she was, a, she's a visual artist doing live painting, 
Uh, oh wow! <laughs> and after that, I thought I should uh, try and uh, play with more people, like in a free improv kind of way. And what I started doing and are still doing till today is getting their signal and live processing uh, and manipulating through pedals and loops, loopers and uh, everything. That's what you were doing in that gig as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, I was playing to, some guitar. You, absolutely. Uh, but yeah. I remember other people playing and you just manipulating. You have to show me how that works because yeah. it's, it's fascinating. We, this was when we were in Athens and we went out to a show that, that Yanis was playing. And I think Dan and I both stood at the back and we were just blown away by the... Oh, I so... got down the front. I, I made my way right down the front and I sat down in front of... What's his name? Michalis Siranidis. <laughs> in yeah, front yeah. of him. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard anything like that before. Nor me. It's so far um, out, of our, out of our wheelhouse. Yeah, but what was awesome was that there was a, like a, a lot of people on stage, but everyone was so tuned in, everyone was listening, and it's not that often that you go and see a band where everyone's really listening to each other. You in know. a bar, that's the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the most but difficult part. Yeah. yeah, it was, yeah, I'll, I'll never forget it. It was yeah. brilliant. With a mad person's pedal board. Yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> so awesome. what, what you just saw, um, or what you will have seen through this video, and there'll be some at the end as well, is an example of that. And Yanis, you've, am I right in saying you've just taken this board to Poland or somewhere to do a gig, or you've been yeah, I was abroad in somewhere? Yeah, Krakow before I came to London for three gigs with a great sax player, Giuseppe Doronzo, from, uh, he lives in Amsterdam. And we're playing a lot together the last uh, few months and we traveled to several cities doing improv gigs with uh, musicians from each city. Wow. So awesome. that, that was the case in Krakow. So uh, th this is my traveling board. <laughs> it's a little bit smaller than my <laughs> main board that I have back, to, uh, back in Athens. So when you're doing this, Let's say you've you can take three or four pedals maximum. Mm -hmm. What what are the things that you absolutely must have? Um, yeah, I think I would get the delay llama extreme. Right. I always need the delay. Uh, Is that look, because of the way it oscillates and modulates? And... Yes, and it has presets, and I really right. use the random uh, mode. Oh, okay, right. And um, so I would get a delay, uh, the boss looper, because it gives me abilities to do layers and uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think the third one would be, I would say an overdrive or a distortion, but lately I'm playing a lot with uh, ring modulators. So oh, I would nice. be a ring modulator. Nice. Yeah, we've just been on the journey of discovery <laughs> with ring modulation. It's been brilliant for us. Yeah, but you just saw it being used actually creatively as opposed to what me and Dan did with it. So what is the weather station thing on your board? There, you'll see a detail of it on screen now. The bits of metal and springs. So, yeah, that that's a box with uh, different kind of springs. Uh, Springs and uh, metal things attached, and there is a piezo underneath, mm. yeah. and uh, you can uh, it's it just sends out the any like sound that you can create with springs and. So you're using that and the saw and the guitar to create as, sounds. Yeah, and like as a signal generator yeah. that you can then take those sounds 
and manipulate mm -hmm. with yeah. yeah okay using stuff like the looper like the infinite is that the infinite jets is that what that is uh, no it's the, uh, the micro the oh, yeah. same company yeah. right yeah. yeah yeah okay how often are you <laughs> surprised by what comes out because you've been doing this for so long and you know the gear so well do you still get surprised by what is created yes because especially when you are in a free improv context right. and you you manage to let yourself completely free to try uh, you always get surprised by sounds that you or combinations that you maybe haven't hadn't tried before yeah so yeah it's very interesting process and I, I don't know how much interesting is for the audience but <laughs> but I think that's really important right because as as guitar players we have our favorite pedals um, and I was actually just having this conversation with Manalis before about how you can get to a point where you know everything just so well that there are no surprises and sometimes that can be good but not all the time you know sometimes it's nice to throw a bit of a curveball in there just to, to make you react a bit differently and to knock you a little bit off kilter as it were um, but if w with what you do if you're consistently being surprised by the sounds that's coming out, I can see why that would be continually inspiring. How often does it go massively off the rails? How often does it crash? The bet, it, it always gets off, yeah. but the <laughs> bet is how quickly you get it yeah. back right again. Ah, nice. So that's the, the reaction. I, I mean, the more you play in the... More better, you know your setup. Mm. You get to be faster to manage to not allowing it to get so off yeah. to manipulate it better. Yeah. Okay, so m maybe a slightly more difficult question then. As somebody who is so creative and artistic and brings all that together in music and and pedals. Do you ever get frustrated with guitar players like me? A lot. Who look at the Delay Lama Extreme and go, I can't work it. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you marry that in your, in your business? So you're not off making a ring modulator with a spring on it. You're actually still making a chorus pedal that 90% of guitar players want to buy. How, do you, how does that pan out in day to day? Um, I mean, uh, here comes Emmanuel where he brings all the vintage side of uh, the company and uh, the l the last years I'm going more and more towards a more experimental direction mm. and that's now what we're trying now to bridge this distance and for me the delay Lama extreme was the perfect result for us because uh, Manolis bring the vintage analog sound mm -hmm. to the table uh, I was trying to bring more experimental and um, strange features and then Elias came in the company and managed to bring these two things together ah. with uh, ideas as well so, so the we... three of us managed to put together a pedal that in my opinion it's the best of the two worlds. Mm, yeah. I mean, it's still a, a pure analog, good sounding analog delay, and at the same time you can go wild with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, not with so many features that you can get yourself lost in there. Nice. So except ice, for me, fire, ice, and lukewarm no, water. Lukewarm water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is is the naming process of your pedals always as much fun as when we named? Yeah, yeah. We, we, it's always like that. We always have great fun when we try to name it. <laughs> well, that is interesting because so, yeah, obviously these guys are from Athens, Greece, and first language is Greek. Uh, and I guess it's fair to say that the language of the rock and roll pedal world is probably English, or American, should we say? D does that present any issues? Do you do you consult with? people who have English as first language or do you just go with it? How does that work? Um, I mean, when I started building pedals, my English were much worse than uh, today, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> It's, let's just let's just say for the and record, I always get shit like this. So. <laughs> it is it is somewhat 
infinitely better than mine and Dan's Greek. Let's not forget that. Right? <laughs> our, our Greek's pretty good, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, 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 Malacca. <laughs> so, yeah, this way to my like is that they both know better English than uh, speak better English than I do. Um, save the company from uh, <laughs> bad English writings and, uh, yeah. Once in, uh, I was in, uh, remember I was in Frankfurt back in 2008 and the premier guitar came to, <laughs> to, to get an interview. And uh, I, I remember I had this a big multi-pedal and I was so proud and I, I think I said, uh, this is a multi-pedal, it's so many pedals in one box, it's so easy, you just put it down and you finish. <laughs> 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 this, and this is still there on air. Ah, the co the best comment was ha ha ha. He talks like Borat. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, seeing as you mentioned Borat, there is uh, a parallel career. Um, uh, have you got your phone handy? Uh, yes, I do. Dan, you need to see this before we. Uh, there's, there's, there is. We will become serious again in a moment but Yanis no, does have the, a parallel career. For me this career. is very serious Mick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't consider to be less serious than what I... This, so the this is my parallel career. And the context is your sister. The context is that my sister, my younger sister, she's a circus artist. She's a circus artist, yeah. okay. Of course right. she is. So Hang she's on, doing, okay. right. <laughs> she's doing a lot of uh, tricks with uh, hula hoops, she's on a very big ball, playing accordion at the same time, doing hula hoop at the same time. So she's very active also in social media and posting poses. And so uh, it came to me one day that I really like this, what she does and I can do the same. So I took some of her photos. Right. And I recreated <laughs> them. <laughs> This is not the best one. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you'll be seeing these on screen at the uh, as as. Be brave, man. And this this leg is not. <laughs> I borrowed this leg, <laughs> and that was five years ago. And oh, that is fantastic! This in, in, in this New Year's Eve. Uh, inspiration came, <laughs> knocked my door, and I created this. this. It's just, <laughs> it couldn't be better. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> it's got the, that's the ocean there. <laughs> and ha you haven't seen my masterpiece. Oh, okay. Which, uh, this, these pictures were posted online in my Facebook profile. Okay. What uh, the, this one I have not posted yet so because I consider it to be my masterpiece. This is a family show, so we don't know so, if we can post it. That's one. I'm very proud. Of that. <laughs> oh, mate, that is spectacular. Bravo. Amazing. Bravo. The spirit of art, you see, Dan. Uh, yeah. I think this is where we're falling down. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Thank um, you. Yeah. Wow. Okay, we, we, we've had a quick... Um, <laughs> we, we've, had a, we've had a quick uh, rummage around Yanis's brain uh, to unearth, um, firstly, why we kind of fell in love with jam pedals in the first place and why we <laughs> did the Rattler and the Harmonious Monk and all that. Um, and secondly, just as an insight into that creativity in the music, it is... It is. It remains inspirational, yeah, and as absolutely. such, we are going to try and do some jamming before uh, these guys head back to Athens, if we have time. I guess the, the final question is, what next for Jam? Because here you are, growing, successful, analog. There in Athens, what? Where do you see? What's the, what's the trajectory? Well, the next steps is making more pedals of course uh, there are so many pedals that we we want to build to make and we haven't found the proper time to, mm. for R&D yet uh, but I mean I always loved flangers ring modulators uh, spring reverb so that there are 
things octaves. So we we want to make all these pedals, and uh, we want also to take it to a, m- a direction that we took also for the delay lamp extreme, mm-hmm. putting together modern features and um, opening think them up for more experimental players and not only guitar players. Mm. Um, uh, today, everybody playing. Uh, everybody who's playing an instrument mm. uh, uses pedals and effects, right? So we want to to open to the more instruments and uh, musicians. What, what about like 500 series and modular synth and all that kind of stuff? Is that something that you? Uh, I mean, we would love to, yeah. but uh, it's more down the line. Yeah. I, it's there are so many things that we we want to do before that uh, have more priority for us. Mm. So yeah. When when is the next new pedal coming out? I want to hope that it will be in uh, it's October. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> in October. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, and we hints, say what it is. No, we can, can't you, say can you hint he, he what doesn't direction allow it's me. in? He doesn't allow no, me. No, nothing. Way. The sex direction. <laughs> Brilliant. Look, last question from me. Um, there's a great mixture of analog and cutting edge technology in with what you do. Where do you see the like? Where do you see the pedal market in the next few years? For people that are getting into the industry now, you know, where do you see it going? I mean, there are, there is room for everybody. I feel because, right. and still today, there are so many musicians and guitar players that trying to find that sound that they hear on this Jimi Hendrix album or there. So. The, the, Vintage sounding pedals are still here, and mm-hmm. will, I think we, there will always be there. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I really like when new companies like uh, Bitronics or Chase Bliss come to continue where Zivex stopped, I think, and uh, make more challenging and uh, different, let's say, nice. uh, sounding machines. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there is so much creativity in this industry. It's something that we love, and it's a massive part of why we love you guys and what you do. Um, and so, yeah, thanks again for coming out and hanging out and uh, and doing what you do. It's it's honestly, it's endlessly inspiring. And, yeah, it's awesome for us too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone, there'll be some more uh, music after these messages. Please go to that pedalshowstore.com to buy merch. Go to jampedals.com as well and check out what they've got going on. Go to patreon.com slash that pedal show to support us in that way. And there's some other things in the links. If you click down the description, you'll find some other interesting information. Indeed. In yeah. Thank you, mate. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, yes, everyone, have a great day. We'll see you on Monday for viewers, comments and questions. Till then, have a great weekend. We'll see Indeed. you soon. Take it away, Yanis. <laughs> <laughs>